This is critical thinking in the digestive anatomy lab. And here are some questions. The first one is on histological layers of the GI tract. This one is a histological slide. And then the third one is a special x-ray. Let's look at this first question where it asks you, in which layer of the GI tract does the nerve plexus the arrow points to lie in? And then what are its functions? Let's first identify the layers of the GI tract. So if we go from outside in, so the most superficial layer up here is the serosa. And you can actually see the mesentery over here. And you can see the nerves and blood vessels passing in the mesentery. The second layer is the muscularis externa, which is this layer. And it consists of this outer longitudinal and the inner circular layer. And in between the outer longular, uh, longitudinal and the inner circular layer is this nerve plexus that you can see. And this nerve plexus that you can see is known as the myenteric nerve plexus. It's called myenteric. The next layer, this white connective tissue layer, is the submucosa. And in the submucosa, you can see these glands. So here you're looking at glands. And notice how these glands have a duct which opens into the lumen. You can see these blood vessels. So here are the blood vessels. And these same blood vessels which you see, these are cut sections. And this nerve plexus, which is what the arrow is pointing to. So you can see that the nerve plexus lies in the submucosa. And this nerve plexus is known as the Meesner's, Meesner's nerve plexus. And the way you'll remember it is S, Meesner's for submucosa. And then the innermost layer is the mucosa, which in turn consists of three parts. So that's the mucosa. It consists of a muscle layer, which is called muscularis interna, or also known as muscularis mucosa. And that too has an inner circular and an outer longitudinal, but much thinner, as you can see, compared to muscularis externa. Then we have a connective tissue layer, which is known as lamina propria. That's called lamina propria, which has blood vessels and some glands, which are not as deep as the ones which go into the submucosa. And then it has this lining epithelium. So that is the mucosa. So therefore, we've identified that this nerve plexus lies in the submucosa. So th this would be the answer that we would choose. And then it asks you, what are the functions of this nerve plexus? This nerve plexus is, a nerve plexus always would act on glands or it would act on muscle. The way it acts on glands is, if there is a gland, glands invariably have cells and these are the secretory cells. But what they have is a special cell which surrounds them which is known as a myoepithelial cell myoepithelial and as the name suggests it's a muscle which will act on the epithelial lining glands really you can see as they come off they're really kind of invaginations of the epithelium so nerve plexuses act on these myoepithelial cells when they act on these myoepithelial cells these contract squeeze the gland and cause the gland to secrete the second action of these nerve plexuses is, is to act on muscle. So this submucosal plexus will act on this muscularis interna and cause it to contract and that causes local surface movements. So therefore, the function would be glandular secretion where it will act on these glands, on the myoepithelial cells of the glands and cause muscle contraction. Obviously, mucosa is not uh, correct because you can see that this nerve plexus does not lie in the mucosa. This is the mucosa. This area here is the mucosa. So this nerve plexus is not lying in the mucosa. It is not lying in the muscularis externa, which is this area. The, the nerve plexus, the arrow is not pointing to that one. This nerve plexus is the myenteric nerve plexus and the arrow is not pointing to that. Its functions also would be the same, glandular secretion and muscle contraction. And 
obviously the nerve plexus does not lie in the C rosa and a protection is not one of its functions. What you should also know is that this nerve plexus is primarily parasympathetic and um, that's why it's uh, and its actions are glandular secretion and muscle contraction. Now let's look at the second question where it asks you all of the following are secreted by epithelial cells of this region except. So first let's identify this region and you can see these finger like uh, projections uh, these finger like projections these are villi and then you can see these invaginations which go in here these are the invaginations which are going in these invaginations and these are what are called crypts of Libercut. so therefore this is a section which is taken from the small intestine it's a slide of the small intestine and actually, we can even identify which area of the small intestine it is by presence of these glands, which are the Brunner's glands. So, you can see these mucous glands, which are Brunner's glands. So, we can say that this is the duodenum. Now, let's see which of these substances is not secreted by the epithelial cells, which is these cells which line the villus or the cells which go in and line the crypts of Libercourt. Mucus is secreted because the epithelium is columnar with goblet cells. So all these empty spaces are goblet cells. Goblet cells secrete mucus. Enzymes. Enzymes are also secreted by the epithelial cells. In fact, these are special enzymes. They are known as brush border enzymes and you'll do that in digestive histology. If you look at a single cell, if, if this is the epithelium and these are the cells, and if I was to just magnify a single cell, it actually has microvilli, which go up like this. These microvilli give a brush-like appearance under the microscope. And it's this area which produces these enzymes, which are known as brush border enzymes. So even that are secreted. Hormones are also secreted in the crypts of Libercun are special cells, which are known as enteroendocrine cells, as the name suggests. Entero means the gut, endocrine means endocrine cells. These enteroendocrine cells produce hormones which are called cholecystokinin and secretin and you do more of that in digestive histology, uh, uh, physiology. So they secrete that. Lysozymes. In these crypts you have special cells which are known as phanith cells. And they secrete lysozymes, which are antibacterial. So even that is secreted. So all of these are secreted. However, pepsinogen is not secreted by the cells of the small epithelial cells of the small intestine. Pepsinogen is secreted by the chief cells of the stomach. So the chief cells of the stomach secrete uh, pepsinogen. Hence, this is the answer to this question. So this would be your answer. So all of the following are secreted except pepsinogen. Now let's look at the next question which asks you which uh, of the structures listed here is not seen in this x-ray. So first let's look at this x-ray. This is an, a special x-ray which is known as a barium enema. Enema means it's given from below. So the dye is pushed in through the anal canal. And it outlines the rectum, as you can see here. And this area here is the sigmoid colon. So the sigmoid colon is seen. When the dye passes up, this is the descending colon. And from the descending colon, it passes into the transverse colon. So this is the transverse colon. S stands for splenic flexure because this area is close to the spleen. Um, H stands for hepatic flexure because this area is close to the liver. And then it comes on to this, the dye passes into the ascending colon. So the ascending colon is also seen. And then you can see the cecum too. So it passes into the cecum. Now the only thing you can't see here is the jejunum. And therefore this is the answer to this question. And the, and the reason is the cecum is separated from the small intestine, which is in this case it will be the ileum first and then it will be the jejunum. There is a valve here which is called the ileocecal valve. So if I were to, was to draw it, and this is the appendix and the cecum, and where the ileum opens into the cecum is a valve here which is called the ileocecal valve. 
the ileocecal valve allows substances to pass through from the ileum into the cecum so only one way traffic all sphincters and valves do that they allow substances to pass only one way substances cannot go backwards so they cannot go unless the valve is not functioning properly so they cannot go back from the cecum into the ileum so therefore in the case of barium enema when you pass the barium through the anal canal and push it it goes all the way up and comes down like this but because of the presence of the valve it cannot get into the small intestine so therefore you do not see the ileum or jejunum or any of the other structures so therefore the answer to this question is the jejunum so this is how you've actually got to um, think of uh, critically and think what your answer will be